So if you're new around here, I'm Lou and the short ass stood next to me is Emily. Four days ago, after an incredible, well, mostly, three months of van life in Europe, we made the decision to go home for Christmas, which meant we had 10 days to do this. Drive from Croatia through Slovenia, over the Austrian mountains, across Germany, up through Belgium, across Luxembourg, through France, and back to the UK by Christmas Eve. Now, a mad dash back to the UK is nothing new to us. Emily? The thing is, we've done this before, but the difference this time is that we're going at our own pace, it's our own choice, and we're doing it in our own van. So what Emily's referring to is a breakdown that we had last year in which, to cut a long story short, resulted in us having to leave our van behind and to drive from the very south of Spain all the way back to the UK in hire cars, taxis, with a dog, at Christmas, during a pandemic, and bang on the border problems between France and the UK due to Brexit. This time, we wanted to do things a little differently take our time and see some of the sights along the way. And it was going well. Lake Bled in Slovenia was stunning, the drive across the snow-covered Austrian mountains was amazing, we had a great time playing in the snow, and Emily even found the time to make a life-size snow van. Well, to her anyway. But that is where the fun stopped, as not long after waking up in Germany, we try and outdo our now annual Christmas tradition of breaking down in Europe by doing it not once, twice would be far too easy, so we are going for three. We'll pick things back up where we left you last time, breakdown number one. So as you can see, we have broken down. Emily's just on the phone to the AA now. If you feel you're in a dangerous or vulnerable position, I'm not, I'm not traveling anymore. That's it, I'm done. We only stopped off to have a shower and wash our hairs and stuff and look at the state of me. So now that Emily's calmed down a little bit, and straightened her hair. Hopefully she's feeling a little bit better. Um, for anyone that's new here, who's wondering why, we're, well, why I'm finding this so entertaining, I'll fill you in very quickly. We broke down last year in Spain at Christmas, bang on the time of Brexit when they closed the border and it was all a bit of a nightmare. So it's literally not long before Christmas. Right on cue. And today I think France has just closed the border with the UK. Now we should be all right getting back in, but if God forbid we do have to, for any reason, go in a higher car, we know that they're not going to get, be able to get one out to us for us to drive from France to the UK. So I don't think this is going to be as bad. I think it's going to be fine. We might not make it home for Christmas. The only thing that's making it a little bit worse this time is we have summer with us, our mm -hmm. cat. So hopefully the AA can find us a hotel that will take us to. We're filthy because we've got no clean clothes because we was about to go and do the washing. <laughs> it's all in bags ready to go. And, yeah. At least we're pre-packed this time. We got to hoik it all into the few bags that we might have with us. That's what we've got this time. We didn't bring any bigger bags. You didn't learn from last time. You didn't bring no. breakdown bags. She's bought no breakdown bags, folks. But anyway, yeah, we got about an hour and a half, I think, to the AA get here. So we are going to, I don't know, don't know what we're going to do. We can't use any power out the van because obviously if it's going in the garage for many days, I want the batteries to be topped up. Hopefully, look, we're just worst case scenario because of our experience literally just like a year ago i think it was on like the 13th or something of december um but yeah it could just be something little but no they're gonna need parts it's gonna need to go in it's just whether they can get it done this side of christmas but only time will tell and we will make the most of whatever situation we find ourselves in yes mm -hmm. she'll be fine she'll be fine in all seriousness, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as major as last time. I just think there might be a problem with the brakes. The handbrake doesn't feel like it's engaging properly. If I try and drive forward, I can't go and I can just about scrape back in reverse. So we'll see what the, uh, the AA man says when he gets here. Right. So the... Uh, eight. So the recovery man has turned up really quick actually. They said it'd be about an hour and a half and he's been about an hour and 20. So fingers crossed, let's uh, pray for us people, please pray for us. Uh, so he thinks the handbrake inside the rear wheel is shot. So he and I are gonna attempt to fix it here. I don't know what I've got to do. <laughs> I'm not gonna get my sockets out because he might laugh at me. <laughs> what if we can fix it now and get you home? Stop you stropping and paddying all over the place. Oh, you should have heard her for the last hour and a half. <laughs> not funny Louise. You wait there Poppy. Yes, I know you don't want to do this again either do you? I know, oh, nobody does. I know mate. Oh, and this yeah. one has not even like been through it before. You can drive without the handbrake. So it's the handbrake is completely shot but he says he's going to take it away and then I can drive I'll just have no handbrake. What? Maybe. What? Alright. 
Germany's flat, babe, we'll be fine. So, he's just said that um, it's fine, it don't matter, you can drive without a handbrake. Just don't park on any hills, and if you do, just put it in first. I don't know what to say about that. Like, I understand, but I just feel we've got a lot of miles left to do, and we've got no handbrake. So I realise that um, when I was talking to you before, I was really zoomed in on my face. This is why I'm not allowed to have the camera because I don't really know how to use it. So, um, yeah, apologies for that. Just doing a test drive now. See how it goes and then we've got to go back to him. Feels all right, but my brakes are like. <sighs> We've just pulled up at a garage to see if they can fix it tonight. If they can't, lose adamant that she's still going to drive me home without a handbrake. Don't know how I feel about that. She's in there now. What did they say? They won't do it because it's a Citroen. They'll only do Fiat's and Ivecos. I was like, it'll be exactly the same part as the Fiat, but they won't do it. But they've given me this one, but I don't even know if it's open now. I'm all up for driving home without a handbrake anyway. It's like a secondary brake. You don't need it. The other brakes feel all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not a European road trip without a visit to Citroen, is it? Let's be honest. And, and, it's a proper Christmas fairy tale because I feel like not only is my dashboard now lit up like a Christmas tree with all these lights uh. on, telling me all these faults, I feel like, um, is it Joseph? Was he the one that had to go around and knock on all the different doors for somewhere to stay? Yeah. I'm going around to all these garages. These can't do it till Monday, today's Friday, and even then they want like 900 euros for the handbrake and the, and the brakes, so we ain't paying that. So brace yourself, we're going home without a handbrake. Okay. Which I think will be fine until we get on the Euro Tunnel. So we'll have to look into that. But it is getting rather late in the day now. I'm starving. You hungry? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go and get something to eat and then we'll see you tomorrow. So yeah, that's the problem. No, no, she ain't going nowhere. <sighs> Best ring the AA. If you're calling for a new breakdown, and I'll knock on the French motorway. So Emily and I show stress in different ways. Emily will shout profanities at me for quite a while, then she'll go quiet before eventually punching me in the nose. Only joking, after making many inappropriate jokes, for me, stress usually presents itself as a nosebleed. Uh, let's face it, it was never going to be as simple as just needing to drive home without a handbrake, was it? Flipping thing. So we are parked pretty much in the middle of nowhere, but not too far from Ulm, Ulm in Germany. Uh, trying to describe to the AA where we was was a bit of a challenge, but it was the flattest park up I could find in the area because we was quite tired after the day we had yesterday. Emily's gone off to take AJ for another walk, clear ahead a little bit, she's getting a bit stressed. It is, I'm pretty sure it's just a flat battery, so I'm sure the AA will come and give us a jump start. If they can't, I can always unplug the charger from the back and give us a jump and a boost off of the jackery, I reckon, just to give us enough power to get her going. It wasn't even that cold last night, only about minus one. Now we've stayed in temperatures on this trip of minus 12 and it's fired up, so yeah, maybe just, I don't know, continual abuse of the van, but if anyone's questioning our uh, decision to go home and get the van sorted, I think we're doing right. <sighs> Wait for the AA. That's what I do at Christmas, I love it. He's eight minutes away, so hopefully it is just what Louise says. Bit of a dead battery, jump start us, get us on our way. And then I think what she expects is for me to just drive until we get to the UK, but we've got to get COVID test. Yeah, so we've got to get COVID test, so um, I'm just going to leave the engine running the whole time, really, and just, yeah, hope for the best. You could drive. I'll drive, I'll, I'll just go home. <laughs> i tell you what, I did say earlier, if it wasn't for AJ and Summer, I'd leave her, I'd get a plane, I'd go and get a hire car. I ain't going to lie about that, because, you know, I'm done. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, chilly. So we are cooking on gas, we are up and running, and I've got to say, ADAC, A-D-A-C, which is the German equivalent of the yeah. AA, have been brilliant so far, haven't they? Yeah. The, the two times we've broken down yeah, in the last 12 you know. hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to attempt now to go and get a new battery, but he did say it's unlikely because they're busy and they kind of mm -hmm. send you away, but we're going to send Emily in and say she needs to get home to her parents for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're little and cute, it might work. Oh, I don't know, not today's face, but then I am really like, oh, please. <laughs> so yeah, let's hit the road? Yeah, let's hit the road. Take our logs with us. So we've just pulled up somewhere that the ADAC man recommended where we may be able to get a battery. He did say the chances are quite slim. Um, I don't know if they're going to fit it for us, if they've even got one, if they can get us one. If not, I'll have to change it myself, which is no problem. Um, normally I would go in and deal with this, but I can't A, take my foot off the brake or B, turn the engine off at the minute. So I'm staying with a van. It's very, I don't mind driving without a handbrake and I don't mind driving with a dodgy battery, but at the minute I'm having to remember, right, handbrake doesn't work. Don't turn the engine off. Keep your foot on the brake. Make sure you're out of gear. It's a bit of a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, they can sort us out a battery because the AA man said ours is shot for whatever reason. He can't, normally, you know, you drive for a good few hours, you charge it up, but because of the weather, whether it will start again the next day, I don't know. So yeah, we'll wait for Emily to get back and see what we're doing, whether we're just driving it. Well, I don't know. We can't even drive straight home. Like we could just drive, because we're not too far. We could probably do it in like 12, 13 hours and we could swap drivers. Emily does drive but we've got to get a PCR test two days before we get on the ferry so we will have to stop somewhere so that is the the issue at the minute but you know we'll see she's coming she's coming so what details do you need um, Normally, identification number I don't know I don't even know what that is the registration number I said to him I got the registration number he said no the identification number we'll be right back so Emily has just called, they can't swap the battery for us but they have got one in stock so they're going to get us a new battery. Um, I'm going to put the camera down because she's getting a little bit stressed bless her and I think the best thing, AJ obviously picks up on that so the best thing for us to do right now because I've no idea what we're filming, I've no idea how the video is going to go but we're going to get parked up somewhere, drive for a few hours maybe, get parked up somewhere, sort ourselves out a little bit because obviously we've worked, we've not done any work for a couple of days so we need to get that on top of that and then we'll pick this back up when I try and change the batteries over and hopefully that's going to be enough to get us home in time for Christmas or I think the third breakdown on this trip will be one that Emily has and no one needs that, no one needs that, believe me. Right then, welcome to a whole new day and a whole new problem. And today's choice of handbrake, this brick that we pinched out of that bit of wall over there. But we have found a camper van allocated park up, which is not our normal kind of park up. It's very urban, but busy, people about, a couple of other vans. There was a market here, but you know, it'll do. It's a safe park up, slightly on a hill. For some reason, even putting it in gear isn't really stopping it rolling, even on the slightest in incline, so. Yeah, bricks, blocks of wood and all sorts of bits and pieces that we're using to uh, stop it from rolling. We have got chocks, but they're just big and bulky and we don't want to keep getting them in and out of the garage. So yeah, whatever bit of crap we can find really. So I'm not going to lie to you, the start of this video probably hasn't been up to our usual standard and that is purely because trying to film this, rush around, trying to get everything sorted is not easy, but just to bring you up to speed. So we've got a new battery, which is ideal. I haven't changed it yet. So I'll see later if the van's going to start. But the other side of our handbrake, the side that's still on is now doing the same as what the first side did. I don't have the correct tools to be able to take it off myself, so I'm desperately trying to find a garage. Now this happened yesterday. We probably drove about another 100 miles, so we're near Stuttgart, and I did ring around as many garages as would answer the phone to me. Found one that spoke English. They might be able to have a look at it on Monday, maybe. Um, he's got two texts off because it's Christmas and they're winding down for the Christmas break. So it's all too much of a familiar story for us, but never mind. So hopefully they're going to have a look at it. If that doesn't work, I'm going to either try and remove it myself or just drive home as it is. So this, I'm really sorry, This, this, these two videos were meant to be driving through eight countries in 10 days. We're just going to show you all the sites while making our way back home for Christmas. 
Emily, after the Christmas we had last year and after deciding we was going to go home for this Christmas, she was really, really, really excited. She absolutely loves Christmas to be at home for Christmas. So now these videos are just going to be, I just want to get her home. So if I can get the van sorted by Tuesday night, that gives us enough time to drive up. We need to get a PCR test, remember, two days before we get on the tunnel. So that's the complication this time. But yeah, that should give us enough time to do it. But until tomorrow, I won't know what's going on. We've spent the whole day today getting all our work done that we missed out on the last two days. So we can chill out tonight. Emily done us a cracking roast dinner. So we've eaten properly, which helps when you're stressing and worried and whatnot. And tonight we're gonna to do something really fun that she's been waiting to do for ages, which is put the decorations up. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just getting some, some stuff out. What for? Never you mind. All right then, happy pants, what's going on up here? Christmas is coming to the van, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Bruce, you want to get all Christmassy, don't you? You can wear a hat. So yeah, rather than sitting around worrying about what's gonna happen tomorrow, we're gonna crack on, we're gonna get the decorations up, we're not gonna film it, we're gonna have a fun night, aren't we? We are, and look, I've even got us some matching face masks. She's gonna love it. It's for her and AJ, because I'm not wearing one of them. Do you not think <laughs> I'm going through enough? You're gonna have one, they're relaxing. That's gone. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna do that. We will show you the decorations tomorrow and we will of course let you know what happens at the garage and how we're gonna get home, if we're gonna get home, what we're gonna have to do. But yeah, we're gonna have chilled out night, aren't we? We are. Look, wait, stay there. <laughs> you love it, don't you, Roost? You do. <laughs> He's a good boy. And hopefully that shot of AJ and his Christmas hat will make up for the sheer lack of any cinematic B-roll throughout this video and just the pure panicked waffle that you've had from us. But on that note, we will see you tomorrow. See you later. Right then, good morning, we're on for an early start today. So the plan, just to recap, is to get to the garage, see if they can help us, if not, I can't remember what the rest of the plan is. We'll deal with that when we get there, but first, I've still got the old battery in, so new battery is still sitting right there. We're gonna see if the old battery will get us started, and if not, quick battery swap, and then hopefully we should be on our way. Yeah. <laughs> Happy pants, she's not a morning person either, so I think that, that yeah, you're probably privileged just to get that, because I've only got a, mm, so far. No, right. Socket set. Right, we just need to take that one out, pop the new one in. Right, so you might have to put the camera down. I'll yep. hold the wire as you drag the battery out, yeah? Oh, and blind, <laughs> blind me with the torch, so that's really helpful. <laughs> Right, new battery's in, Emily's now a qualified mechanic. All we've got to do is connect it up, fingers crossed, that's gonna get us going. So, when I connect this negative side up, that B2B is gonna kick in. Don't panic, we'll reset it in a minute. Oh, I hate resetting thing. <laughs> All right, and remember it will spark, so don't panic. That's normal. Don't panic, folks. Talking to you. There's the B to B. Right, battery's in. I think what I'll do is we'll try it, see if it starts, move over there so we're not parked next to the motorhomes running, even though they would do that to us because that's what motorhomes with no solar and no batteries <laughs> do. They start their engines at silly o'clock in the morning so they can charge their phones. Yeah, move over there and then we'll put the rest of it back in. Happy? Happy days. Right, let's hope it starts. Where's the key? Now we need to get the block out, move over there, put that back together, get to the garage. Okay. Well, we'll see what the scraping noise is like and then see if we can drive. The garage is 36 minutes away, so. Yep. Right. Let's do this. I've got no handbrake. <laughs> So 
So this pile of paperwork here is the instruction manual to everything I've installed in this van and in here somewhere is the instructions for the sterling so that we can reset it to make sure it's on the right profile to charge the lithium batteries. It's really easy, I just can't remember how to do it. Right, so all you've got to do is hold down those two buttons, the blue one and the red one, yeah. uh, for more than 10 seconds but less than 20. Yeah. And uh. that should be it, yeah. That's it, done. <sighs> Nailed it. Not, oh. Not only are you now a qualified mechanic, you're an auto electrician as well. And muscle woman. So we've come this early, um, I don't even know why. Right, so we've come this early because Louise reckons that it's going to be harder for them to say no to us in person. So she's gone inside to go and like beg a little heart out for them to try and just do something basically. So fingers crossed, fingers are definitely crossed. Okay, so situation update. The Citroen garage, the Citroen garage couldn't do it. They're too busy. Friday was the earliest they could book it in, which I believe is Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, I'm not sure. Anyway, found a garage next door. They are trying to get the parts. If they can get the parts today with the delays because it's Christmas and of course the new wave of COVID, then they will be able to fit it for us tomorrow. So fingers crossed, I've been waiting all day for them to get back in touch before I talk to you because I don't want to keep you giving garbled info but I've called them a couple of times and the only person there now doesn't speak any English so I've sent an email so hopefully hopefully they'll be able to get back with us in an email obviously I've left my number but because it's, it's a UK number sometimes it's a bit of a difficulty but plus side we found this camper stop uh, which is quite busy we're finding Germany the Germans obviously like vanning as much as we do because the German vans are out in force and even when we was in the other countries I think we saw the whole three months we've seen like two British vans all the other vans have been Dutch or German, so they have been travelling quite a bit. But, plus side, camper stop, behind me there, water. So we are very, very low on water, so hopefully that's working. I should think it is, because it's a busy one. We can get the van topped up, and then just sit and wait and hope we get an email or a call or something from the garage. If not, I'll drive us down there, that the van can be fixed. They can get the parts and it can be fixed tomorrow, which will give me two days to drive back, get a PCR test. Obviously, we've got to get AJ's... Uh, worming tablet so that needs to be done like 24 hours before we do it so that needs to be done tomorrow really to make things easy so yeah fingers crossed fingers fingers crossed and the stressful drive this morning I'm glad if we can get it fixed because every time it clunks and grinds AJ doesn't like it and he's finding it quite stressful so and Emily obviously goes oh every single time so hopefully please <sighs> that's, that's enough that's enough oh you look like a grandma <laughs> practicing so Granny over here has just been out with AJ, she's just got back and I have news. Oh, what is it? Do you want the good news or uh, do you want the bad news? Do you want to come and sit down? Oh. Uh, excuse my hat here. <laughs> right, what's the news then? So they've got the parts. Yeah. The parts are there now. They're going to fix it at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. You little liar! <laughs> but there is, there is a small amount of bad news. 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, I've checked the weather. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind it's going to take them a few hours, we're going to have to stand outside <laughs> with the dog and with the cat because we can't leave the cat in here because as they put it up on the ramps and keep driving mm. about our mechanics in and out, it's going to terrify her. So she'll yep. be better off with us. Eight o'clock in the morning, minus four. Oh, get the thermals out, baby. Get the thermals. Yeah, so you're going to need your granny outfit back on. Uh, I do it so well. Uh, but no, it is good news. So hopefully... Hopefully all will go to plan, they'll get it fixed and then we can start making our way home and don't forget we've got to sort him out with a vet's for his worming thing. Oh. Go on, swear. <laughs> swear on YouTube again. <laughs> Fuck it, I <laughs> forgot about that. <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed, no more hindrances tomorrow. The new battery should be good, so we should be able to get down there. We'll fill up with water here, which I said is a bonus. And yeah. yeah, then we can get on the road and I've just checked the route. We're still going to go through eight countries in 10 days. We're just going to go through them really fast. So <laughs> you might see a bit of the motorway, maybe a petrol station if you're lucky, a PCR testing centre and a vets. So that is something to look forward to Exciting. over the next five or 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about it anyway. All right, see you tomorrow when we go to the garage again. Whoop, whoop.
Right then, good morning. So the van is in the garage and as you can see, it is cold. <sighs> Minus seven, the van almost, almost, almost didn't start this morning. In fact, I've been up since two, fretting about it because it got down to about minus eight in the night. It's currently minus seven. Um, we have Summer with us in there. AJ's obviously mooching about down there. And I think it's about eight o'clock in the morning and we've got to wait till around about one. So five hours, <laughs> it's gonna get up to as warm as minus two. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, exciting times. Yeah, so we're gonna see if we can walk. It's quite a walk to the city centre, but see if we can maybe find a calf that will let us um, hide out in there. <laughs> like a couple of hobos with their pets, maybe. Yeah, that's it. If not, I, there is a church. I'm gonna seek refuge at the church. Normally the church don't like us for obvious reasons. But yeah, that's our current situation. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm not up for filming much. It's freezing. The camera's now propped up against my glove and I can already feel my hand going. So we will catch you on the flip side when the van is perhaps fixed. Due to the very strict German COVID restrictions, we could not find a calf anywhere that would let us sit down inside or even outside. So we came back to the park where we received a call to say the garage would need more parts and more time. Come on, van fixer. <laughs> I don't know what to say. She means mechanic. <laughs> That's it. Safe to say we were now getting very nervous about the van getting fixed and having enough time to get AJ's tablet, wait the compulsory 24 hours, get our COVID test and make the drive back home. Right then, good morning, or bonjour. We are in Dunkirk. Uh, we lost her for a couple of days. I will explain why. It just all got a bit stressful, didn't it? Yeah. But the German efficiency and engineering has lived up to his name, and there she is. She's here, we're with her. Woohoo! Uh, so I will explain why we're in Dunkirk is because the parts, they managed to get the parts. It was all very touch and go. They didn't come, the van wasn't ready till right late in the day, wasn't it? Yep. We was freezing, we was shattered, we was absolutely exhausted. But that garage in Herrenberg, I think it was, it was called Dirk Balm. I'll put a thing up on the screen now. They pulled all the stops out, didn't they, to get it they going? They did. Uh, honestly, do you know what? They were bloody amazing and really accommodating in that as well. So Yeah, so as far as scores go by country, like most football games would be, it's Germany 1, Spain 0. <laughs> I don't even know what that's reference us to. But yeah, we can't thank that garage enough for getting us back on the road. The reason we're all up in Dunkirk is because once they got us fixed, they was giving temperatures again of minus eight. Now we still have the start issue. I think it's a glow plug issue. And I just didn't want to stay there and risk it not starting and have to call the AA again because you only get three call outs and that would have been our third. So if we then had another issue on the way up, we were stuffed. So we drove through the night. We kept stopping, didn't we? Yeah. Drove for a couple of hours. Trooper. Yeah, well, you was there making coffees. Well, yeah, but she she drove all the way, and do you know what? She annoys me so much, but she's got us here. So at the moment, she's she's up there. Hey, I only last for about five minutes, but I'll do something <laughs> wrong in a minute, and I'll be back in the, the doghouse. But yes, so yeah, we drove through the night, a couple of hours at a time, stopping for 40 minutes every now and again so I could have like a little power nap. We've got it to Dunkirk. This one was having a right flap because then we had to organize AJ's. It didn't give us much time. So if you don't know, if you don't travel with a dog, you have to get a, a worming tablet and then mm -hmm. you have to wait 24 hours before you can go back in the UK. So we needed to get that done ASAP, didn't we? Yeah, so we literally drove straight to the vets and rocked up and just knocked on the door and was like, can you please do it? And they did. Uh, so that was, that was always good. And then we had to get the COVID test. Yeah. Right, so we had to get the COVID test. You have to have them within the two days before you're due to travel. So then it was like a big thing to try and like get them because we've heard that you can get them from pharmacies, this, that. They can't do a test. You have to kind of like have them do it so it's on a record that you can show. So the vet did give me a red flag like I wanted and put one through that. Then we just put it on the screen because I can't remember it. Basically, getting the test was a headache. We've got the test. We're, oh. both, <laughs> <laughs> we're both negative um, and we're gonna fire up the van now hopefully because it's been still about minus two here so we're hopefully hopefully we've been parked here all night she's going to start so ready yeah and that shut me up <laughs> getting a test was a nightmare but we got one we're all sorted we're done uh, you ready hello all right ready oh let me change my hat for driving All right, come on, Fanny, you can do it. Ready? Yeah! 
get me through the tunnel. I'm coming home for Christmas. Uh, it's a camper van, camping car. Where are you from? France. Uh, no migrants. Sorry? No migrants. No, no. Smuggling immigrants. Where do they think we're from? Kent. Hiya. <laughs> oh, yeah. How are you? Oh, good, thank you. You? Okay! Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> 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 okay, this time, Louise. I know, immigrants and cocaine, they definitely know we're from Kent. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'll relax. Sorted now? Yes. Now I'm calm. It's taken three days to calm you down. <laughs> but I've had a coffee, so I might be high up should have told them you was an immigrant and they would have took you away. That's not nice. Okay, so we have arrived home. This one is well, you can oh. see you can see by the face she's catching flies all day long with this. It's <laughs> so exciting. But we have got back home. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the the van problems because obviously there's going to be loads of content on the the changes, the build changes. I might even do a whole video with just of what worked and what didn't work and what's getting changed. If anyone's interested, let me know in the comments. But basically, the big problem there was the brakes and not just the brakes. It was also the the discs, the pads, the shoes, the handbrake, and the actual drum of the wheel itself was all knackered from the heat. But like I say, in the new year, we'll worry about all of that and the cold <laughs> start issue. Uh, but for now, we are just glad to be home, aren't we? Yes, very, very excited, very exhausted. <laughs> uh, the reason we was rushing back to get back before Christmas Eve is so that we can take our day two COVID test and then provided that we're negative, which we should be, we can spend time with family. So yes, that was the mad rush to get back before Christmas Eve. But for now, I just well, we both want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's bookended this year with us with a breakdown at the beginning and a breakdown at the end. Every single person that comes on this journey who comments, watches the video, likes, subscribes, all of those things that helps the channel grow and keeps us ticking over, it means the world, don't it? It really does, so thank you very much. And I think that's pretty much it. It is, so we will see you in the new year, 2022, when this one here is gonna be tinkering about in my fanny. <laughs> I can't. I tried to do it for you. I tried to give you a little present, but I can't. <laughs> a bit of Christmas innuendo, but you couldn't. Well, you tried. You tried. And on that note, we will see you on the next one, guys. Bye. Bye.